In this video, I will show you how you could design your own weather card with exactly the information that you want. This is going to be a pretty advanced one with lots of different code to create. Like usual, you will need to install button card from Hacks. Link in the description. First, we need to set up all the sensors that we will use. If you watched my previous video about the temperature feels like sensor, you should have a decent understanding of how to do this. The genius thing about this new way of creating template sensors is that we can add attributes so we can keep all the sensors we need inside one entity. The first one I add is the icon. I have explained this in detail in an earlier video, but I have updated it a bit since then. I use the above or below horizon info to display a different icon at nighttime. You just need to save a nighttime icon for each weather condition. You can see here that I have two files for each condition. One normal and one with underscore night at the end of the file name. Sometimes I use the same icon for both day and night. Moving on, let's start adding attributes. The first one is the temperature. This is a really simple one. Again, you could use the original weather integration, but adding all these sensors into one entity makes creating the weather card a lot easier later on. Next, I'm moving the feels like temperature I created in an earlier video into this new sensor. If you want detailed information about how I made this, you should watch that video. Then I'm adding the weather condition. This is just the state of the weather integration. Then I'm adding precipitation, or how much rain, snow, etc. For some reason this is placed under forecast in the weather integration, even though it is today's condition. So we need to grab the first item of the forecast array using the number zero. Next one is the wind direction. Not really necessary, but it's a cool thing to add. This converts the wind bearing to north, east, west, south, and so on. Just pause the video here to copy it, or get the full code on Gumroad from the link in the description. Next, I add the wind speed. This also converts the speed from kilometers per hour to meters per second. The last one I want to add is a description of the wind speed. I found these values on the yr.no website. It might look advanced, but all it does is checking if the wind speed is between two values. Then it outputs a text string if it is. Now save the file and go into Developer Tools and Home Assistant. Check the configuration and reload all YAML configuration. Search for Weather Info English under States and check that all attributes are working correctly. All right, let's make the actual card. Start by creating a new button card card. Add the Weather Info English sensor as the entity. Hide the icon and name. I will use the label to house the weather condition. Notice how I'm referencing the entity in the Java code. This is how having all the information in one sensor make things a lot easier. We also need to tell button card to show the label. To be able to show all the weather information inside one button card, we need a way to input all our sensors. We can use custom fields for this. So let's add a custom field for icon, temperature, feel like, wind and rain, and then we just need to display our sensors like we want to. You can get all the code from this video on the link in the description, but typing the code instead of just copy pasting it from somewhere will probably help you understand it a bit better. To start off, we need to place our code inside three square brackets. The icon is probably the most advanced code because we have to display it as an image, but just pause the video and try and copy my code exactly. You can see that we need to use the quotation marks around HTML or text, then a plus sign to add more to the code. The temperature is easier. We just display the number, but we add the degree sign at the end. We might add some formatting to this later. The feels like temperature is the same, but we also add a string of text before the number. On the wind field, we will actually show three of our sensors. First, the actual wind speed, then the description of that speed, then the direction. Remember to use quotation marks and plus signs. BR here means line break. Lastly, we add the precipitation. This will be very similar to the last one, but only using two sensors. It looks like a mess now, but we can fix that by creating a grid. I use a website called grid.layoutit.com to help me generate the grid code. You can see that I create a 4x4 grid. Then I'm merging some of the cells and naming them after our custom fields. This allows us to just copy-paste the code into our button card. Start with the grid template areas code. Add styles and grid styling. Then just paste the code from the website. Fix up the formatting a bit and it should work. Then we need to fix the scaling of the grid cells. 
For the columns, we use 1FR to make them all the same. For the rows, I played around a bit. For me, a combination of min and max content worked the best. Next, we can start styling the individual elements to make the card look nice. Add styling for card, label, and all our custom fields. I start with the card and label styling. Really simple, I just add some padding to the card and the label will get basic font styling. One clever thing is to use text transform on the label to capitalize the first letter. Here I'm just moving the styling code a bit further up to make it easier for you guys to see. Now let's work on the rest of the items. Justify self moves the item left and right inside its cell. Align self moves it up and down. Most of these will use the same CSS codes, just variations in style and sizing. I want the icon and temperature to be similar size. They are the most important info. A font size of 46px and font weight of 400 looks nice to me. I want the feels like temperature to be smaller. I just copy the code from the temperature and adjust the font size. The wind and rain will look exactly the same. I just move the wind to the right in its cell and rain to the left. I also add a padding of 40 to both so there's a bit of a gap between them. I add a 30px margin to the bottom of the label, so the gap between is the same at the top and bottom of it. Now back in the Java code of the temperature. I would like to scale down the degree sign to half of the number. We can do that with a span tag inside of our Java code. Place this inside the quotation marks. Font size of 0.5 EM means 50%. The wind speed should also have a unit of measurement. So I just copied from the temperature sensor and changed it to M s. I go a bit back and forth with this, and I end up removing the span tag so that the font size is the same for all of this text. Then I just add some brackets around the wind direction. I also go back to the styling to adjust the line height a little. For the rain I do pretty much exactly the same. The measurement here is mm, and we need a percent sign for the other number. Then I went back to the styling and changed the font size of the wind and rain sensor to 24px. I could then add that span tag to the Java code to change the bottom line to half the size. This Java code could end up really long and hard to read. You just have to be really careful with where you place this HTML code. I then end up with a font size of 24 font weight of 500 and line height of 18px, and I think that looks much better. And that concludes this tutorial. I know this was really long and maybe a bit hard to follow, but hopefully you learned something. I think it's really cool that it is possible to completely design our own weather card. Please just ask in the comments if there is anything you wonder about. And you can also find the full code on the Gumroad link. Thanks for watching. Until next time.